Spending long hours in front of the computer can lead to dry and itchy eyes, but are computer eye drops the only solution for tired pupils? Sony comes up with the world's smallest and lightest high-definition consumer camcorder, allowing amateurs to produce professional quality video. And Nintendo offers a new type of action game by getting down and dirty with its popular ape, Donkey Kong. Hello there, you're just in time for another edition of Generation E on CNBC, where we'll tell you all you need to know about what's hot in the world of personal technology. I'm Mandy Drury. And I'm Keith Liu. Now, if you have experienced tired and dry eyes after a day in the office, you may be suffering from what's called the Computer Vision Syndrome, or CVS. And some pharmaceutical companies have introduced eye drops specifically for this. We find out how these products are different from other eye drops that are available in pharmacies, or are they different at all? Computers. They've become a daily necessity in our lives. Some people have even turned it into an addiction, spending hours online or playing computer games. Eye drop manufacturers are targeting products specifically at people who suffer from what's called the computer vision syndrome, characterized by tired and dry eyes after staring at the screen for long periods of time. An example of such a remedy is Bosch & Lom's computer eye drops. But experts say that you don't necessarily have to buy such eye drops to relieve those computer strained eyes. Others will do the trick as well. The so-called computer eye drops that you see in the farm that, that are being sold in the pharmacy, they're actually quite similar to all the rest of the lubricating eye drops that are being sold in the pharmacy. So actually, it, you don't really have to purchase the computer eye drop to to um, solve your symptoms of uh, computer eye screen uh, eye strain. You can also use the various types of lubricating eye drops available in the market. If you wear contact lenses, then make sure that you're uh, applying the eye drops that are suitable for contact lens wear. But she also warned about the dangers of buying products that have not been approved by health authorities. An example of this is homeopathic computer eye drops, which contain ingredients that are actually poisonous. It does uh, contain some active ingredients, uh, for example, uh, belladonna, uh, etc., which are actually uh, actually poisonous, but because it's diluted to uh, a very minute concentration, uh, it is being sold as eye drops. But we're not sure of the uh, effect of these eye drops, so uh, as such, we don't uh, recommend it for the use in the office. So far, though, the demand has not been great. Bosch and Lom's computer eye drops were discontinued in the US due to lack of demand, and some people are just skeptical of the claims. Any other product, eye drop is probably just as effective. No, it's not that attractive to buy an eye drop. I don't know. It doesn't work for me. Despite that, the company is confident that the eye drops will do well in Asia. We actually see a growth because there will be more computer executives. People are using the computers more, they start younger. So there is definitely, you know, the potential there for consumers to, to, to pick up computer eye drops for their for their eye symptoms, I mean discomfort when using computers. But ultimately, doctors say that it's good habits that will prevent the onset of the computer vision syndrome. Eye drops, on the other hand, are used to treat just the symptoms and not the source of the problem. So that's why it's important to take vision breaks. You need to rest for a while. After about an hour of computer use, you need to look at a distant object. Okay, the other element to the eye strain would also be your uh, VDT uh, terminal, your computer screen. So you need to look carefully at whether your computer screen is uh, there's glare on the screen or whether your room light is uh, glaring. Uh, so you need to look at all these factors. Perhaps it's time for us to go easy on ourselves. So Keith, would you ever use computer eye drops? Well, Mandy, to be honest, I never even knew that such a product existed. Usually, I just take whatever it's off the shelf at the pharmacy. Yeah, me too. In fact, we would like to know what you think about this. Would you go out and buy one of these computer eye drops, or would you rather just stick to the normal eye drops? Do send us your comments and feedback to jen-e at cnbcasia.com. We'd love to hear from you. 
Elsewhere, Dell has long been king of the castle when it comes to selling personal computers, but the tide may be turning. This last earnings quarter, Dell disappointed the market by missing sales estimates by $300 million. Well, in contrast, longtime rival Hewlett Packard is seeing a turnaround in its PC business, posting its best operating margins since the merger with Compaq back in 2002. Still, with PCs getting cheaper and cheaper, the market is set to get even more competitive. Earlier, I sat down with John Romano, Senior Vice President at HP's Global Consumer PC Business Division, and started by asking him how HP HP is differentiating its products. I think there's always the opportunity to differentiate, and us bringing kind of the core product and those capabilities in a, in a range of choice for the customers um, is how I think we can differentiate ourselves. And then there's really the breadth of product. I think you're going to see with our launch, uh, Big Bang 4 coming up, uh, a, us reaching kind of the next level of system integration um, with the product. So a much broader design integration for both those entry and value sets of products across printers, cameras, and PCs, as well as sort of the higher end media center and high end photo printing products. So what kind of growth then are you expecting for this consumer division, particularly in this part of the world? Right now we're growing faster than the market. I think the number is somewhere around four and a half times the market growth for consumer desktops in, in this region. Um, that is something that we want to continue to drive. Um, Asia Pacific is a very diverse region, it's very large, uh, with a very broad diversity of needs. And um, we see um, unique opportunities to serve both advanced markets like Singapore, uh, as well as kind of emerging markets like India and China. Um, so we um, are targeting very strong growth in this region by serving kind of both ends of that spectrum, if you will. Now, HP recently decided to stop selling the iPod. What is the thinking behind that, and how is HP's strategy to bring digital media and digital entertainment to consumers different from Apple's? Our core strategy for digital entertainment really is to <clears throat> continue to refine and drive the Media Center PC family forward. Um, we are going to take the Media Center PC um, to lower and more affordable price points. We'll be offering some different configurations, some with and some without television. We will be, and we're not ready to announce anything specific, offering some new exciting choices in um, the music experience for the users, particularly for how they can enjoy the music and organize and manage their music on, on the Media Center PC. Um, that will be coming up uh, this next uh, January timeframe. Do you think dual core chips are going to vastly change the PC experience for consumers? What we've seen with kind of the single core technology is it's reached a point where the increase in performance is leveling out. Um, they can't cram more and more onto a, a single core. I mean, they're burning a lot more energy. Um, the products are a lot hotter. So the shift to dual core is doing a couple of things. It sort of enables more of the transistors to start working for the consumer in parallel and consumers do a lot of parallel um, uh, applications. Uh, and it does so in a way that, um, in some senses, will help us build more tame platforms for the users. It, having less power out, um, consumption in the processor will help us build a quieter product, um, and um, that's something that's a real contribution to users. And that was John Romano from Hewlett Packard. Well, still to come on Generation E, Feel the beat and go bananas with this game from Nintendo. Plus, make your old mobile phone look new again with this latest high-tech trend. Details in two. For KEB to win today, we need to have the right people in the right jobs. And for us, that means bringing in leaders who know the global standard at which we need to compete, yet who know how to win in the local market. What Hydric does is it brings together its global network with a deep knowledge of the local market so that we have that match. That's very helpful for us, and that's why we chose to work with Hydric. Welcome to IFEC 2005 the largest and most important healthcare exposition in Asia and in the Middle East. 
iFact 2005 is your key to the fastest grown healthcare market worth more than 100 billion US dollars. It's all happening right here in Singapore from August 31st to September 2nd, 2005. Don't miss it. at the only residential spa in Hong Kong where you can stay the night dedicated to relaxation aesthetics fitness and culinary excellence all on the same plateau the residential spa at Grand Hyatt Hong Kong plateau Most of today's video games require players to use game pads like these to control the characters on screen, while Japanese game giant Nintendo takes a new approach, creating a title that will have you beating away on these bongo drums and having tons of fun in the process. Donkey Kong is one of Nintendo's oldest and most well-known video game characters, alongside Super Mario and Pokemon. So it's no surprise that the popular ape has a starring role in Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, an action game that will have you frantically drumming and clapping away. Instead of the usual gamepad, this title is best played with a pair of bongo drums packaged alongside the game. GameCube fans will remember that these drums were first used in a music-related title called Donkey Konga, which had players beating to the notes that scrolled across the screen. This game takes the concept further by letting you control Donkey Kong via the drums. The right drum makes the ape run towards the right side of the screen, while the left drum makes him head towards the left. Hitting both drums will make him jump, and in order to attack enemies, you'll have to make a loud sound like a clap, which is picked up by the drum's built-in microphone. Using this basic mechanic, you'll take Donkey Kong through more than 16 different levels named after different fruits. Each world consists of three stages. The first two stages usually involve collecting as many bananas as possible. After all, what's a game featuring a monkey without bananas? These levels will have you running, jumping, flying, swimming, floating, racing and lots of punching. Hitting a drum to punch your enemies is truly a satisfying experience that no other game provides right now. The third stage involves the boss, which you'll have to dispatch before the final score is tallied. If you collect enough bananas, you'll be able to win crests that then open up new worlds to play. The graphics are bright, colorful and cartoony with special effects peppered throughout. And while it may seem like it's targeted towards kids, the game is well suited for adults who are tired of today's overly complex yet conventional titles. Not everything's perfect though, some of the later levels are similar to the earlier ones except that they're just slightly more difficult. This is also evident with the boss fights, they suffer from repetition, ultimately becoming less satisfying towards the later part of the game. But if you feel like monkeying around with something fresh and innovative, Donkey Kong Jungle Beat is worth its weight in bananas. Boy, has Donkey Kong come a long way since the early 1980s. Remember the little game and watch Donkey That's Kong? That's right, he's come a long way indeed. But you know, it does get tiring after a while. You've played for too long though. Like 24 hours. Yeah, no, you don't want to play for 24 hours Not beating those drums. No. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, the G Mask Beauty Wrap sounds like something that you might want to use on your face, but not quite. Rather, it's used to beautify and protect your electronic products. CBC's Maura Fogarty takes a look at this latest high-tech fashion trend. There are more than 500 designs, and the number is growing. And that's just the choice of patterns available for you to G-mask your favorite tech toys. Originally from Japan, the Singaporean company has brought the concept of wrapping your electronic gadgets to Southeast Asia. By bringing my business concept in, we can actually help a lot of consumers with various options, right, to actually beautify their gadgets to suit their personalities. Aside from making your gadgets look good, it also protects against wear and tear. The makers of G-Mask claim that it's weather, scratch, and sweat resistant for up to seven years. Using a special material that is ultra-thin and stretchable, your phone is wrapped by hand by specially trained G-Mask staff. electronic gadgets manufacturer, if they were to come up with a certain model and have 20 different colors, they need to manufacture 20 different colors kind of same model. But with us, we can actually give the customers this option with very minimal cost. Prices start from 23 US dollars for a single layer wrap and 35 dollars for a double layer wrap. This usually works best for dark colored phones. Customization is also possible. Just send a picture or photo to the G-Mask team or choose some add-ons like crystals or resin. The trend seems to be catching on. Barely four months old, G-Mask now has 13 outlets in Singapore, one in Malaysia and two in Indonesia. For Generation E, I'm Maura Fogarty. You know, I know a lot of gadgets in my house that probably would do well to have some sort of cover like this. And what, what I really like about this, you can take it off if you get bored with the design. How big can the gadget be? I mean, can you go up to, say, the size of a camcorder or a laptop computer? I think a laptop computer is what they actually do cater for as well. Of course, if you do take it off and put on a new one, you probably have to pay the same price again. Of course. I like the idea, though. Yeah. I All right. Do it. Time for a break. When we come back, high-definition camcorders goes commercial. We'll check out Sony's newest model. And casino moguls are betting on technology to win over customers in the Las Vegas Strip. That's next on Generation E. Sam Singh is captain of a Shell liquefied natural gas carrier. Today he's taking his precious cargo from a country with an abundance of energy to a country with an ever-growing demand for it. You chill it to minus 160 degrees Celsius, it shrinks. You stick it in here, and then you go for a sail. Every year, ships like Sam's carry 9 million tons of this, the cleanest fossil fuel available. Which is why today, no one can match Shell's expertise in connecting the world's gas markets. And if people like Sam have anything to do with it, no one ever will. In recognition of great business leadership, co-host China Business Network, together with CNBC, will unveil the China Business Leader Awards 2005 in Shanghai, where business individuals will be vying for the following awards. So who will be China Business Leader of the Year? Find out September 1st. The China Business Leader Awards 2005 is presented by Royal Salute co-hosted by China Business Network and CNBC in association with Shanghai General Motors Buick Regal, Leadership Advisory Partner, Hydric & Struggles, Knowledge Partner, the University of Chicago GSB, Research Partner, Development Dimensions International, Official Media Partners, China Business News, Dragon TV, The Wall Street Journal Chinese Online Edition, Portal Website Partner, Sina, and Official Hotel Four Seasons Shanghai. When your horizons beckon, one bank helps chart your course. Our expertise lets you explore new opportunities with total peace of mind. 
Bank Mandiri, Indonesia's One Bank. Weeknights on CNBC. Get to business before you go to bed with the smartest American show on television. Mark Haynes and the Squawk Box team tear into the events of the day and reveal what it all means to Wall Street with the hardest hitting interviews on television. U.S. Squawk Box, weeknights only on CNBC Asia. Nobody covers U.S. business and markets better than us. See for yourself on CNBC Asia. Profit from it. The Sony HDR HC1E is styled in the same way as the popular Sony Handycam range, combining small, lightweight design with state-of-the-art professional recording technology to produce the ideal high-definition camcorder for the amateur home user. Well, Keith has been taking lots of video with his product and he gives us his verdict. Keith, what do you reckon? Well, you know, Mandy, when Sony first introduced this camera into the market, a lot of people were really surprised with how Sony was able to bring high-definition uh, video recording technology into such a tiny package. You know, I must say that it is really one of the most compact uh, cameras out there that have these sort of high-end uh, premium quality. Of course, the, the price is about 1700 to 2000 US dollars. So definitely more expensive than many of the consumer camcorders out there. Still, however, it, it, it is a step above the rest simply because it can take video footage at 1080i uh, resolution, which is the standard for high definition television. How does the quality compare specifically with camcorders that record on mini DVDs? Well, with mini DVDs, it records in an MPEG format. So the con convenience is really there for people to, once they finish recording on DVD, they just simply put it into their player and they can play it out immediately. With uh, this uh, particular camcorder, you have to still use mini DV tapes. And of mm. course, if you want to transfer it uh, into your PC or if you want to play it out onto uh, the television, you have to use cables. Oh, in, with regards to this one, it actually supports component cable as well. So these, these cables really give out the, the best uh, resolution right now for mm -hmm. television images. So it really looks really colorful, uh, really nice. It's very rich. The image is certainly top notch. However, not everyone, of course, has a high definition uh, television. Was there anything that you didn't like about this camcorder? Well, Mandy, I did wish that Sony didn't have the system where you have to turn the camera around in order to put in the tape because, you know, people like me, I tend to use a tripod whenever I use cameras like these to get stable images. And this tape insertion mechanism is actually right at the bottom. So you have to really take it out in order to change uh, the tape. For people who use it, Handheld, you know, it's not a problem, but for people who use tripods, that may be a bit of a problem. And I believe it's got a touch screen, which can be a problem if you've got greasy fingers. Oh, absolutely. Sony's uh, cameras, a lot of them today, uh, use the touch screen mechanism. The menu system is all embedded uh, on the screen itself. So, you know, my own preference is actually to have a real buttons of something that I can really press on it. I'm not too keen on having touch screen simply because also the menu uh, once it comes up it really blocks the whole image anyway so mm. and you, and the you have to scroll through quite a bit uh, in order to get to the features but that really says a lot about the camera because the camera does have many many features inside it after all you can take high definition or normal definition so you can actually choose between high def and normal dv also it, within normal dv you can choose between widescreen and normal screen display so with all these features, it really gives the user lots of possibilities. A lot of flexibility. Thanks a lot for the verdict. Well, hard science might seem out of place amidst the glitz of the Las Vegas Strip, but more and more casinos are going digital, integrating the certainty of science with the chances that you take on the floor. CBC's Dylan Radigan tells us more. If you look beyond the facades of Las Vegas' shining new hotels, you'll soon discover that design and spectacle only go so far. These days, casinos are using computer technology more than ever in an effort to increase profits one player at a time. Most estimates suggest there are 50 some odd million American adults who are gamblers in casinos. We will have somewhere between 40 and 45 million of them in the combined database. Gary Loveman is the president of Harris Entertainment, the world's largest gaming company, owner of six Las Vegas properties. 
Our system allows us to distinguish between what a customer may be worth to us if we get them to like us versus what they're worth as we see them today. Loveman's competitive edge, a computer system. He calls decision science. It is unique to Harris. He uses his Total Rewards customer database as a foundation for a series of computations, each designed to better determine a player's value and what freebies they may respond to. Loveman is not alone. Mark Yosiloff's company, ShuffleMaster, makes computer-embedded chips and the card tables that read them. We have here two different casino chips. Uh, they look ostensibly the same, but this one has an RFID tag built in. RFID. It stands for Radio Frequency Identification. The technology embeds a unique electronic serial number into each chip, and a scanner hidden inside the table immediately tells the house how much has been wagered. Why is that important? If every wager that you make can be measured and recorded electronically, we can uh, more accurately provide the data to the casino operators to take care of their customers better. It's still too soon to see how gamblers will react to RFID. Only two Las Vegas casinos have even started to use it. It has not been implemented at Harrah's. Gary Lovin doesn't rule out the technology's potential, but he believes technology won't bring benefits to the bottom line without well-trained people on the front line. Good luck to you. Dylan Radigan, CNBC Business News. Now before we go, here's one story we've lined up for you in next week's show. Technology weaves itself onto the athlete's gear. German sports giant Adidas and Polar Electro, a leading maker of heart rate monitors, have come together to unveil an integrated training system with interconnected running shoes, a watch, and a heart rate monitoring top. Athletes can now examine their training progress. We'll tell you how that's done on Generation E next week. And that does it for this edition of Generation E. I'm Keith Yu. And I'm Mandy Drury. From all of us here on the Generation E team, thanks so much for joining us. Have a great weekend. See you same time next week. My eyes is quite sensitive, so I don't know whether I will buy or not. Well, if they are different, and this will definitely assist those people with computer eye strain, of course, I mean, this would be preferable. Not necessarily. Okay, and what would be the primary determinant in your choice of high jobs? Probably cost. Get to know the thoughts of the region's most successful entrepreneurs on Managing Asia, coming up next.